Today I'd like to discuss garden styles. We're going to go through a series of different types of styles and try and understand what makes one style different from another. If you're in the process of designing a new garden, have a look at my seven-part series of designing a garden. It was specifically created for the gardener who has no garden design experience. I take you through the whole process and I can guarantee at the end of that video, you'll have a really great design. Now I'll put a link to that course in the top right hand corner at the end of this video. Now let's have a look at some garden styles. This is a formal style. The things to note in this garden is the symmetry. There are clear lines cutting through the center of this property from where the camera is standing right to the front door. There's another line crossing it in the middle, going through that statue that's in the middle of the picture. If you have a look at the house, it's very symmetrical. The left side of the house and the right side of the house are identical. They have the same number of windows, the same shaped doors, the same spacing between doors. Even in front of the house, they put four different kinds of urn equally spaced to mimic the symmetry of the house. The other thing that gives us away as a formal garden is the boxwood hedges. These are very traditional. This idea of a low hedge forming a type of shape and then repeating the shape is classic in formal gardens. Now if we look at the perimeter of this garden, the left side's different than the right side. But I suspect that's because the right side and left side are, represent the neighbor's gardens and they've decided on using different styles. Now at first glance, this might not look like a formal garden, but it still has that line of symmetry. If you draw a line through the middle of this garden, you start seeing that symmetry. Everything on the left side and the right side mimic each other. Although there's curves here, the curves on both sides of the garden are the same. The types of flowers that are used in both sides are the same. And again, we have the boxwood hedging. This is an enclosed garden which maintains that symmetrical shape of a rectangle. We see some white statues there which are very traditional and you can pretty much bet that the same statues are located in the right side of the garden outside of the picture. This is also a formal garden. You can clearly see the rectangular shape of the garden. There's boxwoods there. The symmetry line runs right down the center of the picture from the camera to the pavilla at the end. If you look off to the left, you see a couple trees trimmed in the round balls. You see the same thing on the right. It's a little less formal because some of the plantings are less formal. The ones at the front of the picture are kind of loose. So although the shape is formal, the plantings are a little less formal. Even the plantings in the center of the picture, the gray perennials and the red shrubs, they're a little looser. They're not trimmed quite as neat as some formal gardens. Now many pictures of formal gardens represent very large gardens. And you might think, well, that's not appropriate for me because I have a small garden. But that's not really true. Here's a very small front courtyard and it's very formal. You can see the boxwood hedging. Each boxwood hedge area has a tree inside. The trees are all the same. You have two benches, not just one, so you have a symmetrical line running between them. The bricks form a rectangular patio. If you look at the shrubs in front of the window, you can see that the left and right shrub are a little different. In the front here, we have one rabbit holding the flowers. And though there's a few aspects of this that are a little less formal, it still has a very formal look. Here's a garden where they've taken the formal idea of a garden and made it a little less formal. You can see the repetition of shapes, cones, the boxwood edging, but rather than making just straight lines, they've added some curves to it to give it a little more interest. So when we're talking about garden styles, there isn't just one right style. There's a range of styles. But all of these give the impression of being formal because the lines are clean, the hedges are all well trimmed, there's a repetition of shape, and of course you've got that green boxwood there. But here's a formal garden with almost no green boxwood. They've taken the rectangular shapes and outlined a pattern with a rectangular pathway going around the center. 
they've taken each of the beds and divided those into rectangles. So you have repetition of the shape. And then they've gone and filled them with very colorful annuals. So at first glance, this certainly doesn't look like a very formal garden, but it, it really is. Again, we have the repetition of shapes. We have the repetition of color. But it's perhaps a little less formal than some of the other gardens we've looked at. And I really like this picture. This is a formal garden that has no straight lines. You'll notice the boxwood hedging. It's divided into four quadrants. Each of the quadrants has the same kind of planting. So you have repetition. Inside that circle is another circle. And inside that we have circular balls. And if you look really closely at those, that's not just a random pile of balls. In fact, it forms a square. And each side of that square has three balls. This is one way where you can take the idea of a formal garden and turn it into something that doesn't really look very formal. And why I really like this picture, it's a very, very unique garden. And that's the thing that makes gardens special. When you're designing your garden, try and do something different that nobody else is doing. So this is a modern garden. We have very clean lines. We have a limited palette. We have some browns, we have some greens, and some grays. The white being just a very light gray. The planting is very minimal. Most of the garden is with hardscape. So we have decks, we have gravel on the garden, and we have gray stone for a pathway. Modern gardens give the impression of being very clean, somewhat formal because of all the straight lines. But you also get that minimalistic feel. You never find these overplanted. Here's another modern garden. You'll notice the straight lines. It has wide steps, lots of white. The furniture is very modern looking. But they've done some interesting things in this garden. If you look at the back wall, this could have been a wall that goes straight across. But instead they put that little jag in. There doesn't really seem to be a purpose for that except to add interest to the garden. The other thing they've done in that back wall is added those openings, those slits. Then that adds such a nice touch to that wall. The wood fence seems a bit out of place here, but even there they've done something special. Most fences would be built with slats going vertically. In this case, they've turned them and made them horizontal, creating a much more interesting garden. Right up in front, you see a little bed. Just has three plants in it, but that adds enough color to break up that expanse of white. Another very modern garden. A lot of straight lines, a lot of repetition of shapes. The shape here is a rectangle. The wall at the back are small rectangles. The patio floor are rectangles. Even the two brick walls on the right and left side are rectangles. And then we have these lights, which are very modern looking. Now, one of the things that you get out of a modern garden is low maintenance. They generally have very few plants. The plants they do have are generally low maintenance. The plants are mostly green. They don't flower a lot. This modern garden has a bit more planting, but again, they've kept it very simple. A few clipped bushes a lawn to mow, and that's it. This garden will always look neat, partly because of the straight lines and partly because of the plants that have been chosen. They pretty much look the same all of the time. Now that's both a plus and a minus. I like modern gardens, but if you're a gardener and you like to get your hands in the dirt and play with the plants, this is kind of a boring garden. As a gardener, I like this one much better. This is what we call an English cottage garden. The garden itself is full of plants. They're all jumbled together. Lots of things are flowering. There's lots of activity going on. As a result, it does tend to look a little messier. But from a gardener's perspective, it's a whole lot more fun. This design looks best when the garden is put next to a house that also has that informal cottagey look. Here's a different garden, same kind of style. Lots of flowers, lots of interest, and you can see the house in the background complements the garden. Now we could call this an English cottage garden, or we might just call this an English garden bed. In either case, 
the secret to making this work is a lot of plants and a lot of flowers. This is a very traditional English garden. You have very wide planting beds and there's nothing that looks as great as a 15 foot wide garden bed chocked full of perennials and annuals and flowering things. Even though the beds here look very informal, the garden does have some formality to it. You'll notice the pathway runs straight down to the entrance of the garden. The backs of these beds have high hedges and they're trimmed in a fairly formal shape. Now these hedges do a couple things. They set off the colors of the flowers, but they also form walls. So this area of the garden is separated from the other areas. You also have this lawn going up the middle to the entrance of the garden, and in the middle is placed some sort of statue, and you can just make out pathways going left and right, so forming a cross. The other thing that's generally done is that the left and right sides of these beds mimic each other. And if you follow the plants going down, you'll see the same one on both sides. This isn't a very strict formal planting. The plantings are kind of loose, but you see that repetition in color and types of plants. Now let's have a look at Japanese gardens. People outside of Asia talk about Japanese gardens as if there's one Japanese style of garden. But that's not true. There are actually about seven standard styles, and there's certainly variations of those standards. Us Westerners have certain symbols in our minds that tell us that this is a Japanese garden. This Japanese lantern is one of them. The minute we see this in a garden, we conclude that this must be a Japanese garden because it has this symbol in it. To the right and behind the lantern, you'll also see a bit of a fence made with bamboo that's tied to vertical posts. This again is a very traditional way of making a fence in a Japanese garden. Now here's a very traditional Japanese garden. It's a courtyard, it has some water, has lots of stone. The plantings are fairly simple, you will rarely find a lot of color or flowers in a garden, although they do have flowering plants that flower for a brief period of time. But the focus is on greenery, and many of those plants are highly trimmed into a specific shape. One of the things that these gardens do is they give the viewer a sense of calm. If you compare this to the English cottage garden, where there's a riot of color and things happening everywhere, it's an exciting place to be. This garden is a very calm place to be. It's a great place to just sit and think. And the design of this garden is done on purpose to meet that requirement. At first glance, this might not look like a Japanese garden, but on the lower left, you can see a bit of a fence there, which gives you that indication. Not a lot of flowering things going on. Again, we have the pond. And this walkway is very traditional. The stones are a bit harder to walk on than standard very flat stones. And they do that on purpose. They want you to slow down and enjoy the garden. So those stones are picked to be a little irregular on purpose. While we're looking at this garden, I want to point out another design secret. You'll notice that the pathway curves around to the right, and we can't see where it ends. This adds a mystery to the garden. When you put something like this into a small garden, that garden will appear to be much larger than it really is. And here's a little secret. That destination doesn't actually have to exist. It could just be a fence at your property line. But from here, it looks like there's much more to this garden. A very traditional Japanese style is the wandering garden. It typically consists of a fairly large pond in the center and pathways walking around the outside of the pond in a fairly irregular way. The pathways continually change the view that you get. So plantings will hide the pond at certain points and then it'll become visible. You'll see things across the other side of the pond. The idea is that the whole garden is a journey. And as you're going through this journey, you get different views all of the time. Now, this picture shows a very large garden, but the same idea can be done in quite a small space. 
Think of the pathways in your garden as being a wandering journey through the garden. And you want each place that you might stop on that pathway to look different. Now, when you first look at this picture, you might say, well, this is just a garden somewhere. It's not necessarily a Japanese garden. But there are some elements here that make it an oriental type garden. The Japanese maples are very prominent in those gardens. Lots of rockery, the pond and the bridge itself. So when you're adding structures like bridges and pathways, decide whether you want those to have an oriental flair to them, and then design them accordingly. As soon as you see this picture, that wall gives us away as a Japanese garden. It's a very traditional to have a small garden that's enclosed in high walls. They're almost always painted a yellow or white color. Those walls have a bit of a roof on top. Inside, we get some fairly simple plantings, lots of rocks, mosses, ferns, very little in the way of flowers. Here's a garden that I really like. It's not really a Japanese garden, although it contains a lot of the elements of a Japanese garden. To the right here, we have some very large rocks and a small evergreen that's clipped nice and short. In front of that, we have some gray pebbles. This is very similar to a Japanese sand garden that really consists of sand, which in this case are pebbles, some really beautiful rocks, and some very minimal planting. The pathway is made up of irregular stones and is very common in a Japanese garden. If you follow that pathway, it suddenly changes into a very large rock and then continues on the other side. To the right of that pathway, at the back of the picture, you again have one of these sand gardens, a rock surrounded by probably something like thyme. The trees have been highly trimmed, so all the lower branches have been removed. The planting is pretty simple, and yet it's not a very traditional Japanese design. But it does give the feeling of a Japanese garden, that simple, well-designed, calm feeling. The other garden style that has become very popular is a shade garden. And this is a great looking garden. These large stones create this beautiful pathway going through the trees. Most plants don't bloom very well in a shade garden. So a lot of the planting depends on the shape of the plants. But this one is a bit of an exception. This is actually a trillium garden. Many of the plants here are different species of trilliums, and of course they bloom really nicely in the spring. I really like this shade garden. It has a very simple pathway going up to a bench. That bench is a destination in this garden. It draws you into it and makes you walk to the bench. You then want to sit down and enjoy the garden. Well, you have a fairly informal planting. This garden is all about shades of green. By limiting most of the flowers, you get a very calm environment. You see the tree trunks coming up, so you have some vertical interest. The ferns give you a structure that's very different than most other leaf structure. So you have lots of variation and leaf shape, but you have a limited color palette. This is a great looking shade garden. I love the big rocks. The planting is fairly simple, but you see lots of different leaf shape here. We have the round leaf of the begonias and the pointed leaves of the fern. You also get a lot of color variation, even though there's very little flowering here. The other thing that makes this special is the moss that are covering all of the soil. This is a garden we visited on Vancouver Island. And most of the garden is actually in full sun, but this early part goes through a shady area. And I really fell in love with this. The trees here are magnolias, so they're not very tall, but they've been pruned so that all of the lower branches are very visible. And the leaves on the plants create a canopy over the area. So it's quite shady in here. And yet the trees themselves add so much interest to the garden. So this is a lovely shade garden. It has a lot of interest with plants. It's a little more open, so you do get more flowering plants, which add color. The problem with designing this kind of garden is that unless you have those mature trees, 
you really can't have this garden anytime soon. So although a lot of gardeners visualize a garden that looks like this, it's quite difficult to actually create. The reason that I'm including this picture is not because I think this is a fantastic looking garden, but it does illustrate an important point. If you want a shade garden and you have no trees right now, which is a problem in a lot of new gardens, you can create a shade garden fairly easily by selecting the right kind of plants. The tree in the middle with the red leaves and the one on the right with the whitish bark, I think are both Japanese maples. They grow fairly quickly, and if you purchase these as, say, 10-foot trees, they will give you a decent canopy fairly quickly. There are other trees like the red bud, which grow quite quickly, and you can go from a fairly small seedling to a tree like this in 10 years. The way to create a garden like this, if you have no trees, is to lay out the pathways for your final shade garden, grow plants that like sun, get those trees in place, and then over the years that garden will become shadier and shadier, and eventually you'll have the shade garden that you really want. This is an interesting garden. This garden seems to have some formality to it. This round pond in the middle with pathways running off at right angles to each other, adding some formal design to it. The design of the archways makes this a very rustic looking garden. This is a great design if you like a very informal garden, which is low maintenance. Another garden style that has become very popular in recent years is the meadow garden. And they're absolutely great when they're flowering like this. Or like this. Now these gardens seem very simple. And the concept seems simple. Plant a bunch of plants. Let them kind of take care of themselves. And you'll have a meadow garden. Well, it turns out that maintaining these meadow gardens is actually very difficult. In no time at all, weeds take over and you lose that great look to the garden. There's actually a fair amount of maintenance that goes into one of these gardens. And most people who've tried it have not been happy with their results. Maybe enjoy these in the wild where they exist on their own. Here's a very informal garden. Some might even call it messy. This willow archway adds some interest and the pathway is very unique in this garden. I'm not sure this is really a style of garden. I wanted to include it because it is unique. Every planting in this garden is an ornamental grass. And ornamental grasses can produce such a beautiful display, particularly in the latter half of the summer and in fall. We might call this the grass style. Here's a very informal garden. The plants here take care of themselves. It's very low maintenance, but this little quirky house adds so much interest to this garden. If you're interested in designing your garden, have a look at my videos called Landscape Design. It's a seven part series of videos that will take you through the whole process of garden design, right from setting your wants and needs and understanding what you have now to a final finished design. If you work through that process and do the homework assignments, you will end up with a great garden design. And I'll put a link to those videos in the top right hand corner. See you in the next design video.